Hey everybody, uh, my name is Jason Sobel. Welcome to this uh, YouTube video. I am uh, drawing Quill from The Mandalorian. Uh, by day I teach art and uh, high school art and I teach drawing and painting. And by night I am in the studio and I do marketing uh, and a variety of other kinds of artwork for comics, toy packaging, um, TV shows, things like that. I've uh, done a variety of projects for uh, Star Wars, Marvel. Uh, so what I'm drawing right now, uh, again, Quill from The Mandalorian. Um, there are a lot of people who love this show. It's a great show. Uh, having done work uh, related to Star Wars and with the Star Wars family before, I, I definitely love the show. I uh, figured I would make a video about how to draw a very popular character. It's really not about drawing him specifically. Uh, it's really just about drawing. So let's jump right in. Uh, what I've been doing for the last couple minutes uh, before the video started was working on really light, really rough outlines just to create structure for the uh, what I'll call the shape of his head. Um, you know, we tend to say in the art world that shape is the two-dimensional and the flat and that form is the three-dimensional. Uh, well, he's a, uh, if we suspend, if we get rid of all uh, disbelief, then, then he's a living thing. So he's got, he can't be flat. He's going to start off with just some lines, and that's what I'm doing. And then I'm going to build up that structure, uh, do add some value. And maybe in some later videos, I'll add uh, color to him in order to show how to color. Um, so right now what I'm doing is, again, just doing that really light and very rough drawing. What I want you to notice is, uh, one, I'm drawing with just a regular mechanical pencil. When I do my fine illustration, um, like really high-end illustration, because I'm, I'm trying to you know, be an artsy-fartsy person, I'll use uh, a bunch of different drawing pencils. Uh, you know, all the numbers, you know, all the H's, all the B's, etc. But when I'm just drawing, usually for my uh, comic work, I'm trying to work quick. I'm not worried about... Uh, trying to have 30, 40 pencils in front of me, I'll just pick up a mechanical pencil because I can get, uh, with because of practice, a lot of different values out of it. And uh, look at that, that point on that pencil. I really like the fine line of the mechanical pencil. And I like that I can still get with a, uh, a 0.05 mechanical pencil a lot of, uh, a lot of depth in the, uh, the point. And then, you of course, create those values like you see me starting to do there with the lips and a little bit in the chin. Uh, so what makes Quill and all the Mandalorian characters so much fun to draw is because we just got, you know, wrapped into their characters so quickly, but his face, look at all those wrinkles, look at the, uh, like the leather ear guards and, you know, part of his helmet and the, the goggles, the, you know, just really just cool looking character, uh, voiced by Nick Nolte, which was super awesome, you know, that he was able to come in and, and kind of put his rough and, and cranky voice into a Star Wars character. Uh, but we fell in love with Quill quickly just because of that, you know, I have spoken. He was, he was willing to tell the Mandalorian what's what. And uh, just, again, that just makes him fun to draw. But those wrinkles, man, you know, you just want to get in there and play with those things because they're just so many cool lines. And then you see, like, I'm starting to add value on the left side, which, or excuse me, on the right side, the left side of his head, but the right side of the drawing. But I'll tell you that for my work, that's a mistake. I mean, look at me, I'm right-handed. So what's going to happen here in a, in a minute is uh, I'm, I'm working on the right side of the paper, and I'm going to realize that that's just a bad call. And I, I tell my students all the time, unless you wear a, like a glove or have some kind of paper or something to protect the, your artwork from smudging while you're drawing, uh, if you are right-handed, it's usually best to start on the left side and then move over to the right, which I'm getting ready to do shortly, as I said. Uh, if you look at the technique that I'm using there, I'm, I'm doing a lot of lines in the same direction, and then I go back in with more lines in the same direction or slightly different, and then I use my finger to blend. I'm going to jump ahead over to getting some of the blending in on uh, his wrinkles by his nose and the actual, notice I'm, I'm adding that definition now into that the nostril itself. Um, so I liked to draw that two-dimensional line, really light and loose, just go, give basic shapes. And then as I go back into the drawing, then I worry about committing to lines. Um, I, I've seen a lot of big name artists talk about picking a spot to start that's not super important. Um, I like to move around everywhere because then I'm, I'm not focusing on any one. 
So I'm not going to stick with the uh, draw the elbow first or draw the eyes first or draw this one part first. I'm just going to draw general shapes and I like to move everywhere. So a little bit on the left, a little bit on the right. And I like right now I'm on the nose or excuse me, I'm on the eye, just left the nose. And I'm going to uh, really just kind of keep moving around until I get a little bit defined that allows me to feel comfortable. Uh, I ask my students all the time if they've ever drawn something and because they tried drawing the whole thing all together, it kind of felt like it was rushed or messed up or even worse, the, the, per, the proportion is just way out. And I've uh, gotten a lot of solid answers on that over the years that if you try drawing the whole thing all at once, then the proportion, meaning the size of one thing uh, relating to the size of another thing, just feels off. Like maybe one eye just uh, feels bigger than the other eye or uh, one ear seems higher up. So I like to draw a little bit of everything all at the same time and go back and forth. Like see how I just dropped from the wrinkle and the cheek uh, down into the, uh, the wrinkles where the pads on the side of his face come down by his chin. Instead of focusing on all one area, I, I move around a little bit just so that I can make sure that everything still feels like it's the right size the whole time. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm moving around a lot, then I can feel more comfortable. And only after I really feel comfortable, uh, then I can go in like I am now and start to add detail into one little area because I already know that my basic form already feels good. So it's really starting to flesh out and, and feel good now. You know, he's got the darker lips and uh, notice a lot of the values I'm adding, uh, values where we see that pencil get darker or lighter. Uh, we, we see a lot of that on the right side of the drawing, which is the left side of Quill's uh, face, because we, uh, we have a sun that's shining on the left side, uh, or from the left side of the paper, which is uh, why we get darker on the right side of the paper. So just a little little jump there. Chin wasn't super exciting to see me draw, so we're going up into the, uh, again, that leather cap on the other side of his head. So one of the benefits of watching a sped up video is you can really see the process just kind of uh, develop quickly um, as opposed to spending a long time on a single part. So getting a little bit of the work done in his jacket there. His jacket was really kind of complex, but I really want to get some of that value in there. Uh, his jacket was dark with a lot of darker lines going through it. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of funny how I know it's complex, but since I want us to focus more on the face, I'm not going to draw as many details on that jacket anyway, even though it really should have a lot of detail on it. I think that drawing that detail would actually be bad for the piece in the long run, because then it would be too dark and it would take away too much of the focus that I want on his face. That's a little art trick for you. Uh, you always think about where you want the focus to be and make sure that you emphasize or draw more that would keep the focus in that place. I like those eyes. I like, look at how dark it is around the white eye. It just really draws your attention. That is uh, smart drawing. So starting to build out those goggles. So, you know, I can talk about my process a lot and I can talk about uh, why I do things. But what I'm, I'm hoping to get from, uh, from some of you in YouTube land is I'd love to hear from you all and at some point get some, some uh, info on what exactly you'd like to see me draw. So again, I've, I've done work for, um, or tying in with Marvel properties, licensed work with Marvel, with Star Wars, with uh, Walking Dead. Uh, many, many years ago, I did some licensed stuff for DC Comics. Um, I've done work for all kinds of different things. Lord of the Rings, so many years ago. I just, you know, I've worked for everybody. I've drawn everything. I, I kind of just want to see what is it that you all would like to see me draw and give uh, how to or just you know show you know my process videos 
Um, and it doesn't have to be drawing. I do uh, drawing, I do inking and coloring. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do for some of these videos at some point is I will have a how-to or a draw video and then I will follow it up shortly after with maybe an ink or a color video because that would get just a little bit of, uh, of variety for people who wanna see different things. So in the comments section at any point, you can please uh, encourage you uh, to just go in and let me know what it is you wanna see me draw or ink or color. And because I am trained to do so much more than just comics, and I, I do tend to use in my work so many skills used by uh, fine art or classical illustration artists, I would be very prepared to do other things. Um, thinking we're going to do a perspective video at some point, uh, but specifically, you know, of course I could tie it into perspective for comics, or I can do perspective for fine illustration. We can talk about um, painting and coloring techniques. I've got a bunch of videos I've shot recently of other Star Wars characters uh, from Mandalorian and from other places using a variety of techniques, painting, illustration. Uh, and of course, I will talk to you about the supplies I use for all those things too. Like right now, the supply, as I said, is just a basic pencil. And look at it, I spend a lot of time just trying to use that basic pencil to lightly get in there and get that value. Um, one of my students asks why I do so much with, with mechanical pencil. And the answer is kind of weird. If I know that I'm not going to be keeping it as a pencil drawing, I'm not worried about how clean all the pencil looks. So notice uh, there's a lot of inconsistency in some of the values with the pencil. Um, you know, just some dark lines, some little etchy things that stay darker for longer. And I'm okay with that, again, because I plan on coloring this. So you have to think when you are working, what is your long-term goal for the project? So I know ahead of time that I'm going to probably end up um, making a nice photocopy of this and then painting over or coloring in some capacity uh, with some tool. Uh, I'm gonna color right over the, color, the uh, copy. So I'll make a really nice light copy for myself and then I'll be able to uh, change it later by really going into it and going crazy with the other stuff. So one of my favorite things I'm doing right now is see what I'm doing with the, the pencil. I darkened in areas and then I used the eraser. Uh, there you go to make a little wisp of hair and make all kinds of wisps because he, you know, this guy's an Ugnaught. He's one of the dudes who helped Vader uh, to do the uh, carbonite treatment on Han Solo. Um, he might not be specifically one of those Ugnaughts, but he's from that race. So they, he's got all this white hair that's wispy everywhere. And, and it's really hard to draw white hair on white. So what I've got to do is I had to go in and really get those values going in some places. Like right now I'm getting some of the, just a little bit of hairline, but then look, it's really all about going in with the eraser and using that eraser over the darker areas. Uh, and then I can go back in around those white lines, which you'll see me do shortly. And I'll start to uh, just lightly draw around some of those white areas in order to create the hair. All right, so with the reduction technique, with going back in and uh, going back in and creating that hair, uh, I'm almost done with this drawing. So what, again, what I really would love you to do, um, you know, ask some questions, uh, shoot me some, uh, some comments in the video section. Uh, what do you want to see me draw? What do you want to see me color? I've got a bunch of pre-drawn heads uh, and other characters ready to go that I am ready to color with. But again, I'd really love to do some full pieces. And uh, I've got a bunch of stuff ready to, to, uh, to start posting. So the sooner you all can give me some suggestions, the more likely you are to see the thing that you would like me to draw. Uh, I've got some toy packaging that I'll be doing shortly and a lot of other product uh, and things that I can show, some that I cannot, but I'd be really happy to do video of all the things I am allowed to advertise that I'm doing. So here we are, we are like right at the end here. Uh, thanks for coming in. Uh, we are going to be at about a 15 minute video and a lot of this is uh, just that nice shot, like a lot of just detail right here toward the end where we're finishing up. And I really just hope that you, uh, you enjoyed watching and please uh, leave some comments and look forward to seeing you all next time. Thanks for coming to Jason Sobel Art.